Live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jason Shepard on a game day for both BYU men's and women's basketball. Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, a man who owns the title of best frenemy of BYU Sports Nation and owns it so well, the voice of the St. Mary's Gales, Alex Jensen. Alex, great to have you back, man. How are you? Hey guys, good to see you. Everything's good. Everyone's healthy, which is uh, obviously that's you know first and foremost. It's great to see you guys. I, I can't wait till the day where we can do this again in person, man. But uh, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, well said. Uh, we are longing for that day for sure. And I feel like you know, even though we're over Zoom, we're we're still brought together with the power of the deli gnome. So we've got that going for us. I thought even, we were going to put a mask on him. Even yeah, we sh we probably should put a mask on him. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I've got mine as well. So we're, <laughs> we, we've got dueling deli gnomes here. They've been, uh, which, he's been in quarantine. Always, that's always a good thing. He's been in quarantine, right? Yeah, they have been in quarantine. Yeah, I like the mask idea, though, Jason. I'm glad to see you guys have held on to that. It looks like he's in good shape. We can uh, we can do this with our deli gnomes sitting right next to us. <laughs> Put him right there in the okay. middle. Put him okay. right there okay. in between Spencer and I. All we can right. be like right yeah. in the middle, so that we get the on the two shot. Oh, the, the basketball. His eyes, his eyes yeah. peering over the football. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. Go. That's nice. a great shot right there. <laughs> I love it. Great so, stuff. So, Alex, you know, you were talking about, you know, hopefully everybody's healthy, and that's obviously one of the things that that everybody's focusing on this year. You are in one of the areas that's like one of the hotbeds, obviously, the state of California. A lot of eyes are on that state because of the number of outbreaks. What has the COVID season been like for St. Mary's? Oh, man. You know what? St. Mary's has done a really good job. Uh, I don't think they've had one positive test this entire season. And they started bringing athletes back over the summer uh, in June and July. Uh, Michael Matoso, the St. Mary's director of athletics and the entire team there, they've done, I mean, they've, they've done an outstanding job. That number speaks for itself. Like you said, Jason, especially being here in, in California, you know, I mean, Moraga is, is a smaller town. That's, you know, kind of in a bubble in the Bay area, if you will. But I mean, my hat's off to everybody at St. Mary's. They, they've done a great job, not having one positive test. It, I mean, that really speaks volumes for, the lengths they've gone to to make sure that this season gets played. The voice of the Gales, Alex Jensen with us on BYU Sports Nation. And Alex, it's interesting that BYU and St. Mary's are both dealing with some significant turnover. It's, you know, once in a generation that you get a guy like Jordan Ford. And for BYU, you lose the likes of Jake Toulson, Yoli Childs, and TJ Haas. So much talent now moved on to the next level. So both of these teams have look a lot different. What are the expectations yeah. for the Gales specifically after losing the likes of the star Jordan Ford. You know, I, I, it's it's interesting because I I think it's a little bit similar to a couple of years ago, 2018, 2019, when St. Mary's lost Emmett Nahr and Jock Landale and Calvin Hermanson. Um, and, you know, now you fast forward to this year, right? It is, it's much different. And, you know, Tommy cousy has been playing at a really high level, at least early. Uh, Logan Johnson is starting to really come on. It's just a different looking team. You're not going to get the same type of ball domination and really St. Mary's to, to cater to Jordan Ford and guys like Malik Fitz guys who are uh, unlike any player that St. Mary's has had in, in recent memory in terms of, you know, the ability to break down a guy one-on-one, -on -one, the style is kind of reverted now, or at least the, you know, the, the ideal style for this team to run has kind of, I, you know, reverted now to more of the Joe Ray Han Emmett Nard type of teams where you're seeing a little bit more ball movement, uh, you know, more catch and shoot, less dribbling, if you will. Uh, and, and you know, the ball really hopping around the perimeter, inside, outside. Um, now, things have changed, obviously, a little bit over the last month or so with the injury to Alex Dukas, who, uh, you know, if you were to ask me coming into the season, I would say that he would have been St. Mary's leading scorer. So the Gales have had to change the way they play again. And it's tough to do that when, you know, you don't know when your next game's coming. Right. I mean, St. Mary's, we, we talked about it before we hopped on here. I know BYU had to turn around on their way out to Pepperdine. That game got uh, moved. And uh, for St. Mary's, Pepperdine and San Diego both moved as well. So their game against Santa Clara was just their second in about 20 days. So, you know, I mean, you can practice against each other. But with the injuries right now, I think St. Mary's only has 10 bodies that they can dress up. Uh, Mickey McConnell is playing point guard in, in five on five in practice, uh, who's an assistant coach at St. Mary's. Um, so, you know, I think there's still a little bit of learning on the fly right now. Um, but I think the expectations, man, I think within the program coming into the year, I think they kind of stay the same. They want to keep getting better. And 
uh, you know, when this team was fully healthy. And we'll see what happens going forward. But I really thought that, uh, and I really still think that if they can get back there, it, it's an it, they have the talent to be in the NCAA tournament again. Will their resume show that? Who knows? Alex, it's funny how these two teams always seem to be just neck and neck battling for similar positions. Both, team come in, both teams come in at 9-3, and three, both teams 0-1 in WCC play. What happened against Santa Clara? The Cougars are coming off a loss to Gonzaga. We know how good the Zags are. How much of what you had just mentioned that there had uh, been quite a layoff in between games before they faced the Broncos, how much did that factor into the Gales dropping their first conference game? You know, I think it's a factor, but Santa Clara had only, I mean, that was their first game in 11 days, too. I think everyone's going to be dealing with this this season. Um, I, I think more of the factor, and, and you know, I'm going to have my pregame show here in about 20 minutes with Marcus Schroeder. Uh, he'll never say this, but I will. I think the injuries have played a big role in, in that game, in, you know, the Sacramento State game, in the San Diego State game. The, the last four games since Alex Dugas has been hurt, I wrote down these numbers for you guys, just for you guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, nice. 37% floor, 24% three. Wow. I mean, we're used to St. Mary's shooting close to 50 and 40, you know? So I think that having Alex Dukas and Lemon Bockler and those guys out there, they make an impact without making a shot just because of the gravity of the defense and how, like the Steph Curry, not quite like Steph Curry, but the same concept you hear when describing Steph Curry, right? So I think that is, that's a factor. Uh, that is, that, there's no doubt that that's a factor. Santa Clara played well. St. Mary's didn't play very well. Um, you know, I, Tommy Cousy has been outstanding for St. Mary's this year. He's been their best player, but I don't think that their recipe for success is going to rest on him taking 17 shots a night. And that's what happened against Santa Clara. Um, so I think it's still a team that's finding its way a little bit after reshuffling some pieces, because not only are those two injuries to their two best shooters, they're also at the same position. So you have right now maybe some square pegs and round holes and, I think it's just going to be a matter of working that out as time goes along uh, for this team to reach its potential again. Not surprisingly, based on the recent history between St. Mary's and BYU, Las Vegas thinks this will be a one-point game currently in favor of St. Mary's. You just brought up a bunch of injury concerns. BYU's without Gavin Baxter and without Wyatt Lowell yeah. who just uh, had his Achilles injury. And historically, BYU hasn't played well in Moraga. Only one win there against St. Mary's. So do you think the one-point line is, is fair for tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's St. Mary's and BYU, man. Like, we just talked about, right? There's so much unknown this season. Like, you know, I can talk about injuries. We can talk about all that stuff. It really doesn't matter until these guys get on the floor. And I'll tell you this much, like, being around St. Mary, I'm sure it's the same at BYU and every other program. They're not talking about injuries, you know, they're, they're talking about how can we get this done with the guys we have. Um, so, yeah, I expect a, listen, this is a big game for both teams. I mean, you look at what St. Mary's has coming next with Gonzaga coming down on Saturday, c coming to town on Saturday. And you look what BYU has next playing at the Hilltop against USF, a good USF team. They've beaten Virginia. They hung with Gonzaga for about, you know, 30 minutes in Spokane. This is a big game for both teams. I mean, the loser of this game could it's it's conceivable they're zero and three in West Coast Conference play by the end of this weekend. Um, so yeah, I expect I, I expect a close game. I expect a competitive, uh, hard fought effort. The three games a year ago, guys. I mean, I know that both teams are different now, but the three games a year ago, decided by six total points. Wow. Six total points. Like I mean, so. You know, I, I just think that it mirrors where these pro, these two programs have been in terms of the West Coast Conference since BYU joined the league. I mean, they're right there, neck and neck. So, yeah, I expect a close game. Because these games have been so close and so highly contested by both teams and so many great players over the decade or so that these two teams have been facing each other, where does this rank from the St. Mary's side of things? Where does BYU rank in terms of a rival? That's a great question because it's really a new rivalry. You know, I mean, Santa Clara, I mean, St. Mary's played there. I think it was their 234th game all time against Santa Clara. Wild. So if you're talking about that was on Saturday, right? Uh, so if you're talking about like a deep rivalry, Santa Clara and, and USF to a certain extent, those would be the two that I would point to. The Gonzaga rivalry is obviously well documented, right? How many times St. Mary's and Gonzaga have played each other in the West Coast Conference championship game? And before BYU got to the West Coast Conference, and even after BYU got to the West Coast Conference, those two have really battled out a little bit for first place. Gonzaga obviously has taken another step now. Uh, but listen, man, I mean, 
this is certainly make no mistake this is a rivalry like we talked about how competitive those games were last year these are the two teams that are always deciding who is going to try and take down Gonzaga so there, there's there's no mistaking that that you know I think the fans feel it I think that the players feel it I think both programs feel it we talked about how evenly matched these two teams have been over the last handful of years so yeah I mean that if you're if you're ranking rivals right now it's probably Gonzaga and then it's BYU based on the last handful of years, just because of how competitive these games have been. That's fair. For BYU fans, it's probably Utah and then St. Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be the second uh, best rival, if that's a thing. Alex, uh, right? great, yeah, well, yeah, man. Great to talk I, with I you. I was going to say, it's, it's the same both ways then, right? Yeah, yeah. It might as well be. I mean, we've <laughs> got the gnomes here, you know. Yeah, we, so. we started the interview with the dueling gnomes. Let's try and wrap the interview up, too. Let's get, <laughs> let's get both gnomes in the picture. There we go. There it is. Just the five All of right. us <laughs> hanging out on the Sports Nation. <laughs> Alex, uh, enjoy the call tonight. Always great to talk with you, my friend. We'll, uh, we'll do it again soon. Guys, take care. Happy New Year. Hope you had a good holiday, and uh, hope to see you guys again soon. All righty. Sounds good. Thanks, Alex Jensen on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show out. Did we just have two Matthew Della Vadova <laughs> gnomes on the segment? We did. We're, we're breaking barriers here in yes. Studio B. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right.